I think I'm live. My phone is literally propped up precariously. But I'm determined to do chapter two today. Today is Monday. And uh, it's the 20th of December. A day before the solstice. So, we are now at chapter 28 of my book, Bliss After Life. And uh, it got interrupted. Um, I don't know why, but I stopped yesterday. Um, and I'm continuing today. So they had come home, Holly and Chris, and uh, they decided to have a nightcap. Their lives often seemed surrounded by bad relationships. Chris helped in the refuge and Holly's therapy work almost invariably involved couples at each other's throat. Maybe they simply suited each other, but they had also always been quite determined to face life together. Chris had been divorced a couple of years when he met Holly. He had been a, a, in a very unhappy marriage before, and he left that behind when he met Holly. Holly. He immediately felt that she was meant for him. Holly was not quite that enthusiastic at first, but she always found Chris interesting, mm -hmm. not boring. Man, man, manly without being too macho. She had always been a fierce fiercely independent woman, no wonder, with a mother like Bliss and any other man who thought he was superior simply because he was a man did not have much of a chance with her. She was working as a qualified therapist uh, when she'd met him at her friend's house. She had a few relationships, a couple had lasted over two years, but at that time she was living on her own, quite enthusiastically decorating her newly acquired flat, and my battery is almost flat. He was so easy to talk to, and he was interested in what she had to say. They both loved to talk. Chris was four years older than her, and at 37, he'd seemed more experienced. Having been through a messy divorce already, he'd become quite cautious with women. But Holly had bowled him over completely, straight away, when he met her. She was such a sharp thinker, so often-minded. But what he admired most about her was her compassion and understanding. Of course... She was also beautiful to him. Tall, slim, and she had the loveliest greenish eyes. She was still a little attractive. She was still a very attractive woman at 59. Chris had developed a little pouch and his hair had pretty much disappeared, but he still looked handsome to her. They talked about Natalie, of course. Both knew that there was no point in trying to figure out too much why she had killed herself. It was a hopelessness in such a young person which always struck Holly as such a waste. Susan told me how she'd got to the refuge. She had lost a baby and was really depressed. Yes, I felt she seemed very down. She had been to see a doctor a few weeks before and he had prescribed her some antidepressants as usual, the quickest way to get the problem out of the door. I don't think she took any of them. They wouldn't have had anything so quickly and I had the feeling she had planned a suicide some time ago. I do wish I had talked to her a bit more. She was quite withdrawn but I cannot help feeling that the refuge could have become a really good help for her. Um, if she had just given it a little longer rather than proceed with her intention of ending it all. I know, love. It's just so horrible and final now. No chance to help her any more, and best not to dwell on it. There's nothing gained in raking over it. I'm really tired. Let's turn in. I do the big family dinners, though. I do love the big family dinners, though. Always a great joy to see the children talking and laughing together. I'm so very pleased for Sophie and Rosie. It seems like they're getting together and they like each other. Let's focus on the good things. Makes for easier sleeping. Now, this is not very long, but my battery is empty, so I will charge it and finish here chapter 28, and I will continue chapter 29 soon. <laughs>